What's going on peeps, Mastermind here. So today's video, I wanna talk about Street Fighter V and whether or not Street Fighter V is killing the FGC. Now, before I begin, let me take this time out to just suggest that you click that subscribe and like button if you enjoy this kind of commentary and uh, news and information. So moving on from that, as we all know, Street Fighter V has had its struggles as far as its sales are concerned and many different struggles with the game itself. I don't really want to dwell on all of that, but let me just point out a couple of things that have hurt Street Fighter V, things that we all know, uh, going from console exclusivity to the lag input, matchmaking issues, and let's be honest, and I'm gonna to touch on this in a moment. This game is more for the pro and the veteran. This isn't really for the casual fan as we initially thought it would be. Part of the issues also with the casual market is that it's lacking an arcade mode. The story mode came late and it was ridiculously bad. One of the other problems that I see in the game and a big problem that not many people are talking about is the fact that we got an incomplete game but yet we still have to pay for the additional characters that they've added to the game or you have to earn them and it takes quite a bit of time to earn them. So for I'm speaking just from the casual standpoint the casual fan isn't really going to appreciate that they have to put hours and hours into the game to unlock Jury and Balrog and Guile and whatever. So, you know, it's it's kind of become a thing where either you're a pro or you're just a big Street Fighter fan and you're willing to spend the money. And I think that's kind of alienated a huge portion of the audience, not to mention it's a PS4 exclusive, you know, which kind of hurts them as well because the Xbox, although it hasn't sold as much as a PlayStation, it's still probably about 30 to 40% of the market out there. So you can't just ignore those gamers. You're talking probably almost another million people who would have purchased this game, which would have made it a lot more popular than really what it is. But anyway, moving on from that, I really didn't want to dwell too much on those things, even though there are quite obvious issues that Street Fighter V has, including many other gripes that people have as well. But what I wanted to talk about is where do we go from here? Recently, Capcom, I believe it was Yoshinori Ono, stated that the game is going to have a lifespan up until at least 2020. So they're going to continue to support the game, even though a lot of fans have seemed to kind of abandon Street Fighter V. Now the hardcore audience is going to be there, they're always going to be there. But the whole point of releasing another Street Fighter V and, or another Street Fighter game and, and doing it the way they were doing it was to attract a casual audience. If you think of Mortal Kombat, you think of Smash Brothers, you think of even Killer Instinct, uh, they have a, a pretty decent casual fan base. Now obviously Killer Instinct's fan base is a lot smaller, but the Mortal Kombat fan base is pretty huge. And right now, everyone was anticipating Street Fighter. It was the number one uh, entries as far as any fighting game in history during this last past EVO, and that event was amazing. But it didn't translate towards actual sales. Everyone thought that maybe after EVO and uh, attention that the game got that maybe it would have picked up on sales, especially with some of the new content that they've put in, but it really hasn't. It's really failed to get that audience. and. People like Maximilian, he had his suggestions for why he thought, um, you know, where Street Fighter was lacking and, and, and what he thinks can help improve the sales. And I don't discount any of his ideas. In fact, I like the V-Trigger idea a lot. But my biggest issue with taking it from that point of view is that's not the reason why casual people didn't buy the game. The reason why people didn't buy the game is because it was somewhat incomplete. It didn't have certain modes, and I don't think the arcade mode or story mode is really going to help things now because once they finish the arcade mode or the story mode, then they're going to want to go online and they're going to get demolished. And that's another issue. The matchmaking is a big problem because really, if you're not a pro and you're not able to do some of the things that, you know, at the very least you see uh, just people online doing, it's going to really discourage you. And that's a problem I think every fighting game runs into. And that's just something that no one's going to figure out because no matter how easy you make it, then you're going to have the pros that are going to exploit that better than you are. So there's a huge portion of the audience out there that just feels alienated every single time they play Street Fighter or any fighting game. It's not like Call of Duty where you may come up against the pros, but 
let's face it, if a pro is, you know, standing still somewhere and they got their back to you and you shoot them, you know, you get a kill and you feel good about that. You're not going to win too many button mashing matches in games like Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, or Killer Instinct up against a pro or even a veteran. You're just not going to do it. So where does that leave fighting games? What do they have to do in order to get that audience where your game has to be extremely fun? And if you look at every fighting game, they kind of have their gimmicks. Like the Smash Brothers, obviously you have the characters. That's the gimmick. That's the real big draw and that it's really simple. Mortal Kombat, you have the violence, the fatalities, and the over-the-top, you know, moves and combos. And in Killer Instinct, you have just a outrageous combo system that's there and the counter breakers and the combo breakers and the characters as well you know pretty big draws so street fighter we're all used to the characters we love the characters but they omitted some of the you know wild over the top characters that we've loved over the years blanca uh, akuma uh, sagat uh, i can go on and on so you know that kind of hurt them now you know they got alex and balrog has made a return jury is here so some of the more fan friendly characters that we don't see too often or as often as we like are now in Street Fighter V and I'm sure there's going to be more of that. But Street Fighter V doesn't really have one specific thing that I can say that's just really, really fun. Like when you get in there, you're just like, wow, this is amazing. Now again, I have to say if you're a pro or you're just a veteran, what you're going to find fun and interesting, just casual gamers won't. So I'm trying to just separate those two audiences so we get a clear understanding of what's going on. So this begs the question, Street Fighter V was the most anticipated fighting game probably ever, and it's failed pretty miserably at this point. So my question is, has this killed the FGC? Because I feel like the fighting game community, the hardcore people are always going to be there, but did this destroy the chances of this community getting larger and, and getting more attention and getting more support? Because at the end of the day, if it's not getting the support that it needs to, companies are just not going to continue to make these games. So I know a lot of veterans and pro players are like, well, the hell with the casual audience. No, you can't say the hell with the casual audience because companies like Capcom who have struggled financially need money coming in. They need the revenue. They need the support. And if they only get the support from a small fan base relative to what, you know, other companies get for their games, it's going to be a problem for Capcom as it has been financially. So, and, and we can argue Capcom has made a lot of mistakes with a lot of their franchises and, you know, they haven't really supported some of their franchises the way they should. But this is Street Fighter. This isn't, we're not talking about uh, Bionic Commando or, uh, you know, Final Fight. We're, we're, I mean, this is Street Fighter. You expect a certain kind of quality and consistency with this franchise. Now, what, where do we go from here? As far as fighting games are concerned, let, let me talk about Street Fighter first. As far as Street Fighter is concerned, maybe they repackage it. Maybe they add another title to it, even though they said they probably weren't going to do that. But maybe throw in a super in there and have all the characters that they've released, including some new ones, and, and just have everything in one nice bundle, one package, nothing incomplete. Maybe throw in some costumes in there and re-release it at a cheaper price. If they do something like that, then I can see maybe after EVO that all of a sudden now everyone's talking about Street Fighter again, the matchmaking is better, and then everyone is happy. I don't know if this is going to happen. I think right now the focus is on esports, and I think Capcom is treating Street Fighter V like an esports title. They've kind of said that they are, so I don't think their focus and concern anymore is with the casual audience, which the fighting game person in me says good i like it better that way i just don't know what it does for the franchise and i also don't know what it's going to do for fighting games in the future because let's face it killer instinct is pretty dead i'm not saying totally dead but it's not really moving the way we had hoped maybe they'll announce a new killer instinct who knows maybe another season mortal kombat they've already kind of stopped working on that to finish injustice and then we have tekken 7 so those are like the real prominent fighting games you know out there i'm not saying that the other fighting games aren't big or whatever but i think these are the most anticipated titles within the next few months and the ones that have been the more prominent ones in the last year or two so where does it leave fighting games i mean uh I think the opportunity that Street Fighter had to really blow things out the water, I think they dropped the ball on that severely. And I just don't know if Tekken is going to be that killer app. And I think DC, because of its popularity, Injustice will sell really well. 
but that's just going to be more for DC. It's not going to really be for fighting games. So I don't know where we go from here. I don't know if some of the problem is a community and people are just too good and it kind of discourages casual players from, from really getting into the games and playing them. I don't know if it's a combination of the fact that, you know, maybe people just want to shoot things nowadays. I don't know what it is, but I think the fighting game community is in jeopardy. Now, did Street Fighter V kill it? Absolutely not. And I just think this is a topic that we need to discuss, but in no way do I believe that Street Fighter V is destroying or has destroyed the FGC. If anything, the core group in the FGC has expanded because of Street Fighter and of course other fighting games. But I do believe that the moves Capcom has made and you know the direction that they're going has alienated a huge portion of the uh, video game audience and it, they're not really expanding that audience. And it, it kind of is disappointing, but I am still optimistic. We do have Tekken 7 coming out. Killer Instinct, who knows what the future holds for that. Of course, Injustice 2, Mortal Kombat isn't going to go anywhere anytime soon. And of course, Capcom is supporting Street Fighter V up until 2020. So we still have a bright future ahead of us, hopefully. But this is a question we must ask ourselves, especially concerning Street Fighter in the near future, because who knows what's going to happen within the next couple of months. Anyway, what are your thoughts? If you got something to say, don't forget to leave a comment down below. And of course, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you once again for watching. Mastermind out.